Today's video is tau particles aren't leptons. But before I get into that, I want to just briefly thank my new Patreon supporter. I appreciate your support very much. Thank you. Now, when we look at the table of the elements, most physicists will acknowledge that this can't be the elementary particles because it's too complicated. There's too many constants that have to be accounted for, the mass and magnetic moment of various particles, and we need to have something simpler. And an ideal type of model, we would only have maybe two particles, one, two, three particles, something like that. But I, I think two is necessary to explain what we see. And, and depending on how you count. <laughs> so we have to do something. I mean, what particles here have to go? Well, if you look at it, the tau is actually a pretty good one to take a closer look at. And so I have. And this is what you find when you take a closer look at the tau particle. And one of the first things you need to do is consider that the decay products, when a particle decays, have to come from somewhere. Causality exists. And what I found is most of the decay particles, products, come from the particle. That they were in there and then when it decays, it decays to what it was made of. And there may be some additional pions, I mentioned it down here, a letter G, I think, that quantum fluctuations can become excited and add one or two additional pions, sometimes a little more, but, but generally the largest number you see of pions is how many pions are there in some form or another. And so what we find when we look at the decay modes of the tau is 65% of them are to something other than an electron or a muon. So the idea that it's a lepton and, it, and you may picture that a tau only decays to a muon or an uh, electron or it comes from an excited muon or an electron, no, that's not true at all. In fact, the most common decay mode is to two pions, 25% of the time. While it decays to an electron or a muon, a little over 17% of the time. So about 35% total. So we have a case where the most common decays aren't even to the muon, which is what you'd expect. And I list here that 99% of the pions decay to a muon, so they're closely related. And then you have 65% of a charged kaon, and you have e even more, over 17% of a charged d meson decay to a muon more frequently than the tau decays to a muon. So it makes the tau look more like a d meson. And I'll come back to that. So we can also see that based on a publication from the particle data group from 2018 that I use on the tau, they have 46 different decay modes. 35 of those involve four or more pions, which tells us that a tau is more than just an excited muon. It's got at least four pions in it. And 15 of those decay modes include two kaons. And kaons decay to two pions. So once again, that's part of those that are four pion decays. But two kaons tells us a lot because we could in an onium type model, have kaonium, where two kaons orbit each other. 
And I'll talk about that more in a bit. So we have 11 k's include an eta, and an eta decays to 3 pi ounce. There are 12 decays to an omega, and omega decays to 4 pi ounce. There's one decay to a phi, which decays to 5 pi ounce. And then there's four decays to an F1. And F1 decay to four or five pi ounce, generally. And an F1 doesn't even fit the standard model. So why are taus decaying to F1s, which F1s aren't elementary particles and, and aren't even standard mesons that fit the standard table of quark type mesons. So not only do they decay to a couple pi ions, but they're decaying to all kinds of different mesons that are low enough in energy to, to come from them because it tells at 1776 MeV. So it's decaying just like any other meson, just like a, a D meson does. In fact, that you can't distinguish them from a D meson based on their decay modes. Now we also can look at it the other way around. That what other particles decay to a tau. A D meson, a strange D meson, a B meson, a J psi, all can decay to a tau while a B or an Upsilon can decay to two taus. So taus can come from mesons, which means a tau-like resonance is inside some of these mesons, or they're related in some way, which once again strongly suggests that a tau is just a meson. And then we can look at the mean lifetime. You would think that if it's an elementary particle, that it would be special and it would last longer. It would exist longer. And in the case of the muon, that's true. The muon is the longest lived, unstable resonance. But the tau is not. A whole host of particles live longer than the tau. I've, on the list, I've got the mu, the pi, the k, the k long, the k short, the d, the d naught, the d strange, the b, the b naught, b strange, and 11 baryons all have longer mean lifetimes than the tau. So by that measure, the tau is not special. The tau does not measure up to be an elementary particle. It fits in with the mesons and not even the most elementary of mesons. So what I've done in my Ionian theory is I can, I've modeled all these different types of mesons as Ionian models and there's a host of them that are made with two k ions and the most elementary is the omega which has two, what I call KD. When you have a two K on models, there's two basic ways to do it. One has a pion orbited by a pion. It has a mass between 385 and 400 MeV per C squared, typically. And then another is you have two, K on, two pions that orbit each other, and that gives you the regular K naught type K, K on. So, and then if it has an electron in the middle of the K charge. So, the omega has two of these lower energy type K ions in them, which gives it a total combined mass of 782 MeV. While a tau on, if you add an electron to it and you add a relativistic orbital mass energy of 980.35 MeV, you get 1776, essentially. You get the mass of the tau. And the 980.35 comes from 
the mass of the electron times the inverse of the fine structure constant, which equals 70 times the number of electrons in orbit. And that comes from the relativistic positronium solution that Feynman and Sternglass and previously Milne had come up with. Um, that they realize that there's a relativistic solution, a second solution to positronium, where the energy is based on the fine structure constant. So I'm able to expand that to account for the mass of, of all the particles, all the mesons and baryons. And I've done previous videos on that in papers. I'll link some of them. So if you take two regular kaons orbiting each other, you get a strange D-meson with extremely good accuracy on the mass measurement. If you take one of these lighter kaons and a heavy one, you get the regular D-meson if they're orbiting each other. If you take two light ones, you get the tau one. And similarly, if they're in a non-relativistic orbit, you take the two heavy ones, you get what's called an F-naught 980, and if you take the, a light one and a heavy one, you get the K star 892. And if you take two light ones, you get the omega. And so when you crack the code, as it appears I have, then the tau definitely looks like it's just another D meson. It's the lowest energy D meson. So it's the the lightest one so it doesn't decay to other D mesons, which makes it look more special and that's why it decays more commonly to an electron than a regular D meson. But that doesn't make it a lepton. And there are certainly other ways that we can look at this, um, and, but scientists will say, well, it appears to be special and decays like uh, more like a muon? Well, no, it doesn't really. Actually, it, it doesn't interact more like a muon. It doesn't really interact that much differently than a D meson, which it's really close to in mass. And like I said, it fits the pattern of the energy. And that model that I've discussed of two kaons fits the decay models particularly the decays to the two kaons and to the omegas, which is 27 out of the 46. So there we have it. A tau does not look like it's an elementary particle. It, and it doesn't look like it's a lepton. It looks like a meson. So if we are going to make changes to the particle table, Deleting the tau is a good place to start. And of course, if you delete the tau lepton, that means getting rid of the tau neutrino, which also means you have to rethink the mu neutrino, and you really need to rethink the muon because you could just categorize the muon as a meson too. That's an arbitrary categorization, in my opinion. So in that way, you could get rid of four elementary particles and simplify the table very quickly, which is what I've done and what I discuss in my books, and which are for sale if you'd like to buy one. And so anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you learned something, and I hope you will think about how do we simplify physics theory to come up with a better theory of everything. And recognizing the tau is not a lepton is a great place to start in doing that. So please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you when I do my next video. Thanks for watching.